Releasing on the 8th of February, Helldivers 2 is hurtling towards PS5 and PC like one of the game's gleaming drop pods, ready for an angry soldier to emerge like the world's deadliest kinder egg. We played the game recently, find a link to our impressions in the description, and talk to Saga Baroshi, the deputy game director at Arrowhead Studios. Saga broke down the game's switch to third person and gave us advice for newbies, as well as revealing the incredible way Arrowhead are playing Dungeon Master to shape the stories of individual battles as well as the shape of the entire universe. We kicked off talking about Helldivers 2's rich sci-fi inspirations. We sort of take in, we put on our plate whatever we can that, mm -hmm. will, that will give us some inspiration. And, and, you know, even from a design perspective, it's not only just other shooters, mm -hmm. right? It's like all sorts of parts of the games industry and all sorts of parts of general pop culture. Obviously, this is a science fiction game, right? So uh, in general, we're taking inspiration from sci-fi from the 60s in particular. You'll hopefully see a little bit of inspiration from some of the 80s like sci-fi action movies, especially when you fight against the, the automatons, who are, again, not the cyborgs um, and clearly have nothing. Question. I had earlier. whatsoever to do with ah! them. Uh, but yeah, Lord, you, see, you see this inspiration all over the place, right? From a style of, of sci-fi experience that's quite unique, we, we play a lot of tabletop in the developer group, right? In the studio and with the group of people that, that build this game. A lot of tabletop RPGs and other types of war games. You're seeing a universe where there is a very very evil uh, humanity, and a uh, but yet a series of real threats, and you can't walk away from there without thinking about 40K and, and, and the great work yeah. that Games Workshop has done over there. But it isn't just the tabletop aesthetic that inspires Helldivers 2. Tabletop thinking gives the game one of its best hidden secrets. So, in a lot of tabletop gaming, you have a dungeon master or a game master, right? We also have a game master in this game. It's very hard to achieve exactly what you get at a table, but we wanted flavors of that into this game. This is not a, a minor part of our game. This is a significant feature that we've designed that is, by the way, somewhat different from the first game, something that we're really excited to talk about. We have a suite of tools and a suite of real life human beings, okay? Not just AI bots, right, that are doing this, that are observing the gameplay as it's happening and responding in, in real time. What, like, so, like servers in like Arrowhead and then they're watching people play and then they're talking to them? That's right. In one of our games, for example, Dave was handed a 500 kilogram bomb to use. And Saga says that's the impact of a guiding human hand. One of our team members was was observing your playstyle yeah. and debated what to do and was like, I'm going to drop them this, this extra stratagem. That's wild. Yeah, you were playing with us at the same time as you were playing with each other yeah. and against the bad guys, right? Because Super Earth is all in it together, right? Mm. We're trying to find the right things to do. Uh, so we have this game master functionality where we can drop in more or less things like buffs, but sometimes debuffs will happen too. Mm. A good challenge sometimes can be really viable. Imagine how, how tight it was towards the end of some of those missions. What if you had to hold and defend the extraction zone for twice as long as you did before? Mm. That might be a bit. I don't think we would have done it. Yeah, and especially at the higher difficulties, yeah. those marginal differences could be the difference between success and failure in the mission. There are a bunch of things we can do with this. So, you know, if you think of like a traditional live game, mm. we tend to think of a live experience as constituting of a series of parts. We really want to model a different type of live service here, something that's specific for this game and specific for the people we're building for. A core part of that for us is to not just do what we would normally do. In a typical live game, you would sort of, um, you'd, you'd launch a game, you would ho hopefully keep it going well, and then you would uh, periodically put out DLC, right? And you would observe what players do and you'd, you'd think back and you would send out some new content. We're gonna do that too. We're excited about that. We're invested in the future of the game, absolutely. But we also wanted to take a little bit of inspiration from how really rapid response parts of the industry work. Parts of the mobile industry work this way, of course, but at a different scale. Very few uh, companies have tried to respond live to players in the way that we are hoping to. As well as shaping the flow of individual battles, that same human hand will also be guiding the battle for galactic dominance, giving us a story that could play out for years. In the first game, we had a system where you would engage against a bunch of enemies in the galaxy and then you would win, right? So you would push them back and then you would win and then the galaxy would reset. And that game is going really well. Now, people are still playing it even this nine years later, right? And it's successful, but we wanted to try something different here. Here, the progress through the galaxy is gonna be slower than Helldivers 2. Yeah. So you're gonna be fighting, trying to liberate planets. As you do that, the enemies have goals, right? They will look at what you've done respond to the ways in which you have, uh, you as the community that is, has behaved and react in a way that changes the face of the galaxy thereafter. So if you say are clearing the way to the first, those planets that were mentioned that you have to get to, and you then take over the next territory and the next one, 
it's hard to say what the terminus will do in response. Yeah. They might try to circle around. They might try to hit you head on. They might do something that you don't expect at all. And by the way, that is something that this game master functionality does for us. And I keep saying functionality because it's not just people and it's not just tools, but both are involved. And we have a human stamp involved at this part. So let's say you get yourself to a certain part of the galaxy. It, think of it like a battlefront, right? So we're battling on certain planets. And as you liberate them, you push back the battlefront, or let's say if you fail them, the battlefront comes forward. And then you're fighting on different planets. You're going to have new types of biomes, new types of environments to play in. You might even have unique missions mm. that you haven't even experienced that aren't available in the normal course of gameplay, but might be at the right time in the story. So there's this meta narrative going on that's playing out at the galactic level based on what actions the community takes. The war, therefore, that you're playing in plays out almost in real time. It's not like in uh, a few weeks the entire war is over. This is a galactic battle. So people who join us, players who join us from day one, they're going to experience the entirety of a full story arc. They'll see everything all the way through as it unfolds, as Super Earth, arrogant as it is, digs itself into deeper and deeper problems. So these are the two levels of Game Master functionality that I think are really unique to this game and I'm really excited about, but also might be a little hard to see right at launch mm. because they play out on a, on a longer time scale. So that tactical thing of giving challenges or, or buffs, right? And then this broader level thing of advancing the story and the events of the galaxy in response to the community. This bigger picture stuff is incredibly exciting, but don't forget that it only works because minute to minute battling is so crunchy and compelling. And a lot of that comes down to the new third person perspective. Just how much of a leap was it for Arrowhead to change the view? I mean, we knew that some things worked pretty well for the first Helldivers. Some of the things I just described, in fact, mm. um, the rhythm of the game, the sort of feeling you have, the way that you, I watched all of you, right? The way you sort of lean forward at some times and kind of <laughs> yeah. like let out an exhale at, at other times, right? Like that is by design. We want that those experiences to happen. There are lots of things that you accomplish by changing the camera angle from top down to, to being third person. What I'd say is, the Arrowhead of 2015 was expert in making primarily games like that. Uh, they specialized in making co-op combat games that were top-down, right? So this is the first time that they've moved that camera angle, and with that has come a lot of growth. A lot of growth simply in the size of the team, a lot of growth in the technology needed to support that, and a lot of growth in the design of the game as well to make sure that the experience you're having still meets the design goals. So what are those design goals, right? There's a sort of in-universe version of this, and then there's the more uh, designer side of like what we are trying to even evoke in a player, right? In universe, we want you to live out the player fantasy of being a lowly grunt, being given way overwhelmingly powerful firepower that you have maybe no idea how to use at first, but that you can learn to use despite the fact that it, you, you might have to go through many lives of yourself <laughs> and your comrades to learn, right? On the back of working for a totalitarian government that is beset by genuine real threats, mm -hmm. right? All of these things are true together, and you can probably see all sorts of sci-fi uh, inspirations and pop culture inspirations and all of that stuff. Um, that's the sort of player fantasy we're trying to achieve. On the design side, we want this game to give you intense, saturated moments of unpredictable, hilarious chaos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So we want uh, to set up situations where you can be there with your mates or friends you meet in the game, right? Go and try to achieve an objective and have wild, unadulterated moments of, of fun that you don't plan for necessarily. You um, just barely die on the way to finishing an objective and then you reinforce just at the right time and land on a bug and therefore you're able to defeat your objective, but then you die on the way to the extraction zone and you aren't even able to get out. We want there to be something that, that can be this sort of bite-sized but incredibly flavorful morsel of gameplay that even for people who can only play one mission a week or something, they can think about it the whole rest of the week. They can chat about it with their buddies. They can laugh about what's what's happened and have these memorable moments, right? So these are the two sides of what we were trying to achieve and what our goals were. And the top-down to third-person view supports both of those things. It both makes you feel more immersed in your character and it also makes you feel uh, like the situation is more chaotic. You simply don't have that omniscient overview of what's happening. There are other things that you that you do have, uh, but uh, it it feels purposefully a little bit more overwhelming, a little bit more like what it might feel like if you got dropped down on a planet that you did not recognize with things out to kill you. Yeah, that was our goal. So, given that the world is so dangerous, what's the best bit of advice Saga would give to a total newcomer? The thing that most strongly correlates with success is, God, I'm going to sound like a like a like a leadership seminar training or something. <laughs> is communication. 
yeah. is communication. So the the teams that talk the most and laugh the most, really, and are most practical about what's happening, usually achieve the most success for a couple of reasons. One. Now, another outcome of bringing the camera down is you just have less battlefield awareness, right? You have less sense of what's happening where. If someone simply tells you, hey, I'm going to go behind here and try to draw this particular enemy away from all of the rest of you, that's key information in how you solve a problem. But that's not the only thing, right? Like the way in which you communicate also leads to surprises that you might not have expected, right? So someone will say, go off and do this type of thing, or they'll say, I'm using this type of weapon or stratagem. That might not be part of your kit that you've used. You might then be explaining to someone someone something that seems obvious to you well i'll throw this thing and they'll say well what is that thing and you're like oh i just unlocked it randomly mm. and suddenly they're like that's the thing you can do or that's a way you can approach this problem right and so it drives you right back into the system of giving you your own goal like oh now i want that toy i want to play with that thing so uh yeah that, that's what we were hoping for with interview time running out we tried to glean one final tip from our expert hell diver what's his favorite stratagem to call down mid-battle I really enjoy using the jetpack. Mm. So the jetpack gives you a little little burst of, uh, of, of of airspace and of speed, and you can use that to get onto onto surfaces and onto say hills or, or cliffs or outcroppings that maybe your teammates can't do, and that sets you up really well for uh, for say pulling enemies into a trap and then being able to do something with them there. Or say if there's a space where you're you have to do some mini game on a terminal while enemies are coming all around you, one of the players, I like to be that player, can hide away somewhere and just like snipe them from 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 a side. And when inevitably you get overwhelmed, you can just kind of jet away too. Uh, but it's not it's not too overpowered. You can't use it infinitely or just fly about in the sky. So there you have it. If you want to conquer the galaxy in the name of Super Earth, you best get chatting and carry a jetpack. And you can put this theory to the test when Helldivers 2 releases on PS5 and PC from the 8th of February. Who knows? Maybe Saga will be behind the scenes making your life harder. Let us know in the comments what stratagems you can't wait to drop on alien scum. And make sure you've subscribed to PlayStation Access for more great behind the scenes insight on all your favorite games. Thanks for watching. Station.